Genesis chapter 25, and I'm reading from verse 19. I'm reading it up to verse 26. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padaram, the sister of Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. May the Lord have blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you, be seated. You observe I'm not rushing this series. If we don't finish today, we'll continue. And I want to say something to give you a picture of what the church of Jesus Christ has become. But like I said, that no, nothing in the church has taken God by surprise. So by foreknowledge, he has put the types in the Old Testament, the types for us all to understand. So you are hearing me for the first time, go back and get the tapes we preached in the past services. What you see in the family of Adam and Eve is the church of Jesus Christ. It's the composition of the church of Jesus Christ. I've explained that. But there must be separation. And there was separation. But even after that separation that produced Noah, the family of Noah again is another mix-up that necessitated separation. And that is what produced the family of Abraham. The call of Abraham is to give a picture of what the church of Jesus Christ will look like. And so we see Abraham had a family and the composition of that family is the composition of the church. And so we saw where first he had to be separated from Lot. Last week we saw that and then secondly he had his children Ishmael and Isaac and they are all a type of the composition of Jesus Christ. The two groups in the church and then Isaac and Jacob and Ishmael. In the Garden of Eden we saw the same mother but different fathers. We come to Abraham, the same father, but different mothers. And it's all a type of the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then we see, we come to uh, the family of Isaac. After the separation, Isaac is separated from Ishmael. Amen. Then we see another set in this time. The same father and the same mother. Another family which is what the church of Jesus Christ is now. If you listen carefully and God opens your eyes to see what I've been trying to bring out from the scripture, it helps you to know how to stand in this end time. It helps you to move from religion to Christianity. 
Because there's something knowledge does. We are not confused again about anything happening in the world. Hallelujah. There's something knowledge does. And I want to please listen carefully. I want to, I pray that God will help me deliver this picture because those watching us for the first time or those visitors here who don't know who we are, they will understand when I talk about uh, the composition of the church as reflected in the story of uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam's family, uh, Jacob's family, uh, what do you call it? Ab Abraham's family. But when it comes to where we are today, even the story of Esther, anybody will understand it. But this one that is the same father, the same mother, is the end time message composition. So, there are things I may be saying that if you've not known about the message we have in this age, you may be confused. But please don't be confused. That should instead get you to be more curious to say what is happening and seek to know what is happening and be part of what is happening. In verse 23 there, same father, same mother, but those but in the womb of Rebecca, a type of the bride church. In that womb, amen, just like the womb of Eve had two children inside, different, different fathers, but the same womb. This time now, it is the same womb of Rebecca, the same womb of Rebecca, but there were twins inside by the same father. But the Spirit of God told, he, told her, Rebecca, he said, two nations are in your womb. Two manner of people are in your womb. And whether you agree or not, amen, in, if you have to agree anyway, be informed that in this end time message, all of us, will Abraham, will Abraham, will Abraham, will Abraham, the message, the message, the followers of will Abraham. All of, all of us, all of us, we are end time message believers, end time message believers, know it now, it is thus said the Lord, two manner of people are in this message. Two manner of people, two, two, two. I'm using Bible language. Don't say I know somebody speak English. Two it should be S manners. But that place is said two manner. Two manner of people. Two manner, two manner, two different people. Group of people are in the message. Take note. Take note. Amen. They were already in the womb. Because this entire message took effect only after William Abraham died and was taken away. That was when the products were delivered. When William Abraham was alive, they were following, following, following him, follow every. Oh, uh, 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 no minister of his time had a crowd. That William Abraham had because of you know the signs and the wonders, and of course, that prophetic grace that he had, that healing grace that he had. You know, anything that is grace, everybody will know this is grace, amen. While others will shout like us here. William Brown will say, Satan, you get out. And the demon will say, I go. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. Praise God. I have seen our ministers, some of our ministers, hey, come here on Tuesday, healing service. Come and see demonstration by healing ministers. Hi, yeah, yeah. 
Amen. You go laugh, tire. Sometimes you wait the prayer and they get distracted. But you see, they have not committed any sin. Now, somebody else will have been stopped and say, why is he doing deliverance like that? Why is he healing like that? Eh? I've seen where somebody do like this. And the person, where they pray, start to look up. He where they deliver is sweat. He sweat. The person where they pray for stand they look up. <laughs> so I had to call their leader. I say, <laughs> go tell that brother. <laughs> he never tire. <laughs> Will Abraham has so much grace? You know the story of T.L. Osborne. When he saw the miracle that took place, he said he, said he could hear, hardly hear the, the, the prophet talking. And he saw the miracle that took place. He had to go to his room in his house and lock himself three days. Three days. No coming and no food. Lord, who is this man? Give me that grace also. So, so they were all following. Oh, Brother Abraham, oh, Brother Abraham. But let me tell you, amen, they are a type of the twins in the womb of Rebecca. It was only after God took away William Abraham that the message was delivered. After the delivery, God took him away. So let's see the product now. It's Esau and Jacob. Take note that the twins were quarreling even in the womb. Even in the womb. If you ever, if you are ever acquainted with the entire message, while William Abraham was still alive, there was a group of people, one of them that I know very well, because God revealed his ministry personally to me to follow. Is the man Raymond Jackson. Raymond Jackson, if you read someone's book, you hear William Brown always making reference to a preacher he called Junior Jackson. Junior Jackson, that is the man. While William, uh, Ray, William Brown was alive, Raymond Jackson decided he was following him. But he caught something. While they were busy looking at that man and the miracle and the signs and wonder, Raymond Jackson kept looking at the message the man was preaching. While William Abraham was alive, for instance, an example, he preached a message to set the church in order that he called church, order, and doctrine, C-O-D. It's popular, enter message, you know, what I'm preaching today is for enter message, all around the world, they're hearing me now. C-O-D. In that message, he said so many things. How that, the someone when you want to, when you come together, he said, one, two, three songs, then the sermon should not be more than either 30 minutes or 45 minutes. 45 minutes sermon. Then let the gifted people come together and pray. If there's any message, they write it down and bring it to the pastor. And then they come and give it and things like that. Put the church in order. Raymond Jackson was listening to him at that time. And Raymond Jackson told them, what will Abraham preach is for his church. Abraham Tabernacle. He has a reason why he's setting that church in order like that. If I take that, then where is the leading of the Holy Ghost? Those who say everything the man talk is to say the Lord, started fighting him. That is the battle in the womb of Rebecca. They started quarreling. While Raymond, William Abraham was still alive, 
I have visited that place. I have visited Raymond Jackson's church and I have visited William Braham's church. They are in the same area, like we say, in the same Ijesha. And I think it's just some, maybe, you know, not up to half a kilometer apart. And while William Braham was still alive, Raymond Jackson went and opened his own church. And the followers of that ministry were calling him, I think they call him black sheep or black, they, they use the word black sheep. And while they were calling him that name, William Braham was still alive. Black sheep. How can we have a prophet on the ground and you are going to open your own church in the same area? And they were calling Blasha and William Abraham got to hear it. And William Abraham had to come and stop it and told them that Junior Jackson is called of God and he's doing it under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. And that anybody fighting him is fighting God. He checked that, they, they kept quiet. Soon after, William, uh, Raymond Jackson had a dream and he came and told Will Abraham. He said, he saw everybody around a rock and something was written on the rock. A sort of writing that was written there. And everybody was there. Suddenly, everybody was looking at what was written on that rock. Suddenly, something took William Abraham away and he faded and he went away. And the people left what was written on the rock. And oh, William Abraham, oh, Brother Abraham, oh, Brother Abraham, oh, Brother Abraham. And he left like that. But he, in that revelation, he said he was interested in what was written there. And he stayed there trying to see what is written there. But the rest left. Oh, Brother Abraham, oh, Brother Abraham. And William Abraham told him, he said, Junior, what you saw will soon happen. When I am gone, you stay with the word. And shortly after, God took him away. Praise the Lord. Why this story? I am telling you the battle that was in the womb of Rebecca. And finally, amen. Watch it again. Watch it again. When they were about to be born, you can read the whole of that story. You understand what I'm talking about. They were about to be born. Amen. The, one of them was struggling. You know, they fight. Who will come out first? Who will go out first? Who will come out first? And they fight, 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 fight. The older one shot his hand out. They said, I may be first. They took a band and put it there to know who be the first. They saw now it's evil red in color. By the time he was born, the second one was holding his leg. <laughs> so you think that God is just entertaining us? Entertaining the family of, 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 of Isaac? No. It is a type of the church. That is what that story is there for. God doesn't entertain us. There is no story in the Bible that is for entertainment. There is something to learn from every story in the Bible. And this is what I have caught. I'm sharing with you. So that you will know where to stand. And the first one that came out, came out with a ban. Amen. But take note. It is that first one that was Kana. The first people that received this entire message, I repeat, without reservation, because I have no reference point anywhere, they were a bunch of carnal followers of the message. How do I know? I know it because if these two groups are in the church, I mean, in the message, if we agree that these two groups are in the message, one must be Esau. So, by their fruit, we will identify them. Who is Esau and who is Jacob? Esau, praise the Lord. Listen, you will identify them. 
That's why I told some people, I say, it's not easy to keep my converts. It's not enough for you to put sign board. Bride Assembly Abuja. Bride Assembly Sokoto. Bride Assembly Umahia. Bride Assembly, we are again. It, it, they will come when they see bride, they will run and come. Amen. But to keep them, ah, our eyes of understanding, he has opened up at last. You don't know the meaning of that song. That song is a reality. By the time we finish this message, you'll understand why I am where I am today in the faith. Why I cannot, why I am different from them. And why you must be different. If you follow what God is doing using this ministry. The Church of Jesus Christ is not a, a group of politicians. The fivefold ministry is not a group of, 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 of ego seekers. We are not politicians. But listen, church, we know where God has brought us from and where we are going and where we are now. Listen very well. Praise the Lord. Esau, in Hebrew chapter 12, was referred to as a profane person. Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 15. Let's read it. From verse 15, 16, 17. He says, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. You can fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know, how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now, who is a profane person? That's the difference between Esau and Jacob. Who is a profane person? Dictionary definition of profane means is to treat, to profane something is to treat Something sacred, something that is sacred with abuse, irreverence, or contempt. To profane something is to desecrate something that is holy. And why do I say this old enter message preachers that have held this truth all these years, especially in this part of the world? Why do I say they are as profane? as Esau. Why do I place them like Esau? I said to profane anything. I said, is to treat something that is sacred with abuse or irreverence. And if you, if you, if you come among these anti-message believers, there is I mean, the group that I'm referring to. The most sacred thing we have on earth today is the word of God. What's the problem? Am I wrong? Then why did, do you have any other thing more sacred than this? Then why didn't you answer me? Are you people from deeper life? Are you Catholics? Who closed your mouth? Even you cannot say amen. I said the most sacred thing on earth today is the word of God. Am I correct? When a man takes the sermons preached by a sinner saved by grace who has become a servant of God like William Brown and say 
Now you have the sermon book. You don't need the Bible again. He's a profane person. I have had it. I saw it, Koro Koro. If you hold that Bible, they say, come and drop that book. What did you know about that book before William Branham came? If not for William Branham, will you understand the Bible? I have had somebody say, we now have the sermon, but we don't need the Bible again. Okay, Esau, you are a profane person. Hallelujah. The second most sacred thing on earth is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know why the first is the word? Because the Bible says he honor his word above his name. Okay. Hallelujah. He honor his word above his name. Therefore, the most sacred thing is the word. Then the second most sacred thing is his name. Hallelujah. When you drop the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism and you take the name of William Abraham, there are people who baptize in the name of William Abraham. It's profanity and you are Esau. And you are holding on to the message. I had a shout, that's why I came out. We are called on to adoption. We are original seeds. What is original there now? Hey, I'm saying something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Profane. While William Abraham, hallelujah, they taught profanity, the third thing, hallelujah, that you must note is that the glory of God he will not share it with any man. The glory of God, he will not share it with any man. That was the reason why the Jews didn't understand who Jesus was. They stoned him. Because he being a man who was trying to equate himself with God. But they didn't know he was Emmanuel. Why when Abraham was alive, some people started saying that this is Jesus. That came again. And he's covering people so that people will not know that it is Christ. And while will Abraham was around, he fought that spirit. He was preaching one time. I read it. Suddenly he stopped. And called, I think it's Smith, that was the name of the man also. He turned and looked at him. Ministers that sat on the podium with him. One of them. He said, he said, he told him, he said, stand up. He said, a spirit just walked to you now and spoke to you. Is that correct? You had a voice now. The man stood up and said, yes. He said, the spirit was telling you that I am God, isn't it? He said, yes. He said, it's a lie of Satan. You reject that. It's a lie. You reject that. He said, it's a lie. William Abraham fought that spirit. He told him a sinner saved by grace. He began to tell his testimony. How he would have been a murderer. How he would have been this. How he would have been that. But the grace of God, they held him. And then one day he had a vision. And he told that vision. He saw a serpent. And he preached a message. Praise the Lord. The bruised serpent. He saw a serpent, a snake. And he took a sword. He tried to cut the head of that snake to kill it. But the snake appeared, he cut only the tail. And the rest entered the water, the sea. And you know Revelation chapter 17 gives us a key. That water there is a multitude of people. It's the world. And he says, it is that spirit that is deifying him. Making him look divine. Making him look like a God. He tried to deal with it, but he couldn't deal with it. That spirit has entered the world. 
And true to it, he's dead and gone. And that spirit is having a field day. William Abraham is absolute. Have you heard that before? Did you hear that before? That William Abraham is my absolute. Do you know what an absolute is? Eh? Infallibility. He cannot make mistake. Apart from that, hallelujah. They are saying that everything William Abraham say is thus said a lot. And they know how to present it. And because of what they are gaining by that, his children are promoting it indirectly. Joseph Abraham is promoting it indirectly. I listened to him when he went to Russia. And he said, what did the Spirit of God tell the prophet? If you will get the people to believe him. If you will get the people to believe him. He said, do you believe him? He said, I am out to preach to the people to believe William Abraham. Subtly, you know what they are dropping there. And I'm saying this. Two groups of people are within the end time message. I'm praying that the right group, Jacob, will hear what I'm saying and get out from this among these people. You will not understand what I'm saying until it will be too late for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophetess. And that is how this spirit has entered the whole world. Listen. Amen. The Bible speaks about the end time. In Daniel chapter 12, it said the wicked will to continue with their wickedness wickedly but the wise shall understand the wise the wise shall understand are they here today are they here today praise the lord so let's look at where we see the story of the wise and let's learn how we are to approach the end time message in matthew um Matthew chapter 2. I think that's where they are. Matthew chapter 2 and from verse 10. You know, they saw the star and they began to follow the star from verse 1. And they knew that was the star that was supposed to show them where the king is born. When they entered the city of Jerusalem, to inquire about the king that is born, the star disappeared. We know that. Praise the Lord. And then they came out of Jerusalem, verse 10. They saw the star again. When they saw the star, listen now, the wise will understand. When they saw the star, what happened? They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Two things here. When they saw the star, what happened? Eh? They rejoiced. Brethren, I am still rejoicing till today for the ministry of the star messenger to this age. If not for the minister of William Abraham, my wife will have been sitting down here at the altar in a special seat with rock. She will have been Reverend Mrs. Doctor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She will have been, and, 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 and please for your information, my wife has just graduated and got her master's degree in public administration. Amen. She has her master's degree now. Very soon she will become doctor. Dr. Alu. 
Then we shall add Reverend Dr. Alu. At the end, we shall put PhD to differentiate the real doctor from theology doctor, from honorary doctor, PhD at the end. But for now, she's almost there. Masters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If not for that man, William Abraham. Amen. I will have been Reverend Dr. Moses Alu. They have given, almost every year, one institution or the other, they offer me honorary doctor degree. I always reject it. Okay, this year they never, nobody don't send me this year yet. Even last year, they sent. They always, have they, have they sent? No. I always receive letters offering me honorary doctor degree for the great thing you are doing. Which great thing? Are you a believer of the message? So what makes me great now before you? You see, you see what I'm saying? Unbeliever want to give me honorary doctor degree for doing a great God work. If I'm, if I'm a successful businessman like, like Brother Cosmos, Brother Cosmos, several universities have given him doctorate degree because he has created employment. His argument, when they hear his history from where he comes, where he is, they, he deserves an award. And anytime they do it, we celebrate with him. But me, I'm a preacher. Eh? University, they want to give me a doctorate degree in what? And there are men of God that pay money to even have it. If not for my eyes that are open. Through the ministry of that man. Who said, if you love me, call me brother Abraham. I am your brother. But the rest today, what are they? If not for that man, I will have been, since I see since small, small now, I will have been prophet. Prophet, reverend doctor. In fact, by now, by now, uh, I cannot be the same level with Zoe now. Reverend doctor Zoe, I have to go higher now. I will have become Bishop, Bishop Moses Alu. Bishop Moses Alu. They rejoiced when they saw the star. Listen, they rejoiced. When we had the message, we rejoiced. I had so many questions to be answered when I came into the Christian faith. Nobody could answer me until I met the minister of William Abraham. He answered those questions. I rejoiced. I was reading those sermons as if I'm going to write exams tomorrow. I rejoice. If not for this man, where will I be now? But they rejoice when they saw the star. But they did not worship the star. Who did they worship? They saw Jesus and they worshipped him. If you are worshipping William Abraham, you have not understood the star. The star is to show you where Jesus is, where you should go and worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This must be our attitude. John chapter 1. John. Now, in John chapter 1, I hope I'm there. This was what happened. From verse 35. The disciple of John. John had disciple. Listen, why I'm emphasizing John. John was the star messenger of his day, correct? Answer me. Hallelujah. You know, you are far from me. So when you are talking, maybe coordinator, maybe very soon I will draw this seat closer. So that I could hear you when you talk. John, the Bible says, among men born of women, none has been greater than John. In fact, Jesus said, John, did you say he's a prophet? He says he's more than a prophet. More than a prophet. And he mentioned his ministry in the Bible. He is the one that had the Elijah anointing. To turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Will Abraham had the anointing to turn the heart of the children to the fathers, correct? 
That's why we say he's also Elijah. The same grace for the uh, uh, Gentiles. John the Baptist had the grace for the Jews. So our response to the ministry of William Abraham must be the same response that the disciples of John had to the ministry of John the Baptist. Anything different, you are Esau. Esau, Esau, Esau. Now see what happened. Again, the next day, verse 35, John chapter 1. After John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak. They heard the message. And who did they follow? Who did they follow? They have been following John all these years. But as soon as they heard the message, pointing him to Jesus, what did they say? The, what did the Bible say? And they followed Jesus. And they followed Jesus. Now watch it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto him, What seek ye? Amen. After you leave the messenger, you catch the message of the messenger, the next thing is to know this Jesus. Follow him. What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say being interpreted, Master, where thou, where dwellest thou? Where are they looking for? Where are you? Where can we find you? Where do you stay? And where will you find Jesus' church? It's in his word. It's not in Brand Assembly Church. Oh. He is found where? In his word. Where will you find Jesus? In the Bible. In the Bible. The sermon book is to show you where Jesus is. And Jesus is in the Bible. I repeat. The sermon books of William Abraham, the messages of William Abraham, every message he preached, he picked his text from this Bible to make us understand this Bible clearer and clearer and clearer. If you cannot pick this Bible and preach from this Bible, unless you quote one Someone will embrace her at the pulpit. You have not yet understood the message. Because there is nothing I am preaching now that is contrary to what William Abraham preached. He did not come to add anything to this Bible. He did not come to give us sermon books. He came to return this Bible back to us. This Bible was taken away from the bride. He came to bring it back to us. And the reason why Esau and the rest, this other group of people, will not allow you, is still a satanic agenda, so that they can mislead you again. If you have this Bible, no pastor can mislead you. Even William Abraham himself will not mislead you. And he said it. If you see me say anything contrary to the Bible, he said, drop my own and hold that of the Bible. That is the reason why our sisters cover their hair. Enter message churches don't cover their hair. And it's a big issue to them. Some of them cannot associate freely with me because our women cover and then they will say they are not in the message. How can you say you are in the message? How can you say you are in the message? And your sisters are covering their hair. When will Abraham say that the hair is the covering of the woman? That one is contrary to the Bible. Therefore, I drop that to William Abraham. I hold the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I've said something before. I say, from the book, listen, from the book of Acts of Apostles, to the book of Jude in the Bible, there is nothing there that needs interpretation. Therefore, don't go and look for interpretation of anything. There's only one place 
that needs, uh, uh, it's a mystery that needs to be explained. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. The order of the coming of the Lord. The shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. Nobody understood what that meant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Until William Abraham came and broke it down for us. Amen. They broke it down for us to know that there are three different stages of the coming of the Lord. And there are three different activities, three different periods that they will be fulfilled. Apart from that, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14 is church order when we come together like this as a church. Chapter 11 tells us how we should conduct ourselves during the communion service. Chapter 12 defines the gifts for us. Chapter 13 tells us how to operate the gifts and chapter 14. Chapter 13 tells us to operate these gifts in love and chapter 14 tells us how we should operate the gift and it is because of chapter 14 of first corinthians that is why it is wrong for everybody to speak in tongue in the church the pentecost as everybody stand up begin to speak in the spirit and begin to preach in tongue chapter 14 condemns it and it needs no other interpretation so don't tell me that william Abraham said say what when he came to tell me that he preached what apostle paul preached a woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered, dishonoring her head. When praying or prophesying, grow hair a bit. A man praying or prophesying with his head covered, dishonoring his head. When praying or prophesying, go and shave your head a bit. Simple. Esau and Jacob. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I know I cannot go too far, but let me see if I can say one more thing here. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Stop, Abraham, say, Abraham, say, and begin to say, the Bible say, the Bible say, the Bible say, then I will know you are in the message. I'm talking to preachers. If you are going to, to win souls, go for evangelism, you will go with someone book, Abby. If anybody will listen to you, it will be idolaters that will follow you. People who are looking for men to worship. Then you go and tell them how God used William Abraham mightily and be preaching William Abraham, preaching William Abraham. They say, hey, a man there like that? Uh, they are idol worshippers. But when you meet the real seed of God, the first thing they will do is, the Bible warns us that first prophet shall come. Who be this one again? You know they talk about Jesus and they talk about William Abraham. Who be this? Amen. But we are to preach. Then, they will ask you, ah, but I have been in redeem for all these years. Why didn't I know about water baptism? Come, how did you know this and I don't know it? Then I can tell you we have a message. It is through this ministry I saw it. Praise the Lord. But if you go and tell them about William Brown, they will not listen to you. Open the Bible and shock them that you know something Reverend Doctor doesn't know. But they will surely ask you, come, how you take note, which Bible school you go? Then you will tell them, we have a message. Praise God. Brethren, we have a message. That message opens your eyes. Then give them the website. Give them the sermon books. They will hear the voice of William Abraham screaming. What will you be saying? Come back to the Bible. Come back to the Bible. Stop ordaining women pastors. Stop commercializing the gospel. 
Stop all this nonsense they are doing and profaning the sacred word of God. It's a profane ministry that will allow comedians to stay and come and jest in their pulpits. It's that profane ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me use five minutes and, and drop this and then I close for now. I never finish off. Hallelujah. There's a statement that Apostle Paul made in Romans chapter 9. Let's dissect that again. In Romans chapter 9, this is how he put it. And what Apostle Paul said very sincerely is also the condition of my heart from verse 1. I said the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a cause for Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom are as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect. And this is where I am going. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Amen. Israel. Israel is Jacob. Is he not the son of Isaac? Eh? Praise the Lord. But watch what he's saying here. Amen. When he say Israel here, he's talking about prince with God. It's not everyone that says, I am Israel, 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 that is a real Israel of God. It's not everyone that says, I'm in the message, I'm in the message, that is a bride of Jesus Christ in this age. That's the truth. Now, see what he said. Amen. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but there is a special person who in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is one group of people. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Okay, now, now, when you say children of the flesh, and there's the children of promise, it means there will be the identification. Now, there is a promise of restoration in this age. What are we restored to? We are restored to the apostolic faith, apostolic doctrines. We are restored back again to the genuine power, manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. We are restored to what we see again, what we've seen before in the Acts of Apostles and in the New Testament church. Satan came and swept everything away. Before I finish this sermon, I will make reference to the hair of Samson. It was crept. God is restoring it back. Children of the flesh are those who are hanging the picture of William Abraham at the altar on their body, carrying salmon books to be identified as entire message believers. They are the children of the flesh. The children of promise are those who when you come among them, you will see the Bible again in display. Christian love, manifestation of the power, exhortation of the Lord Jesus Christ, back again to the Bible, back again to the Bible, back to the freedom of worship, freedom of the Holy Ghost. You don't catch people. You don't catch them. Allow freedom. Freedom of the Spirit. Men and women gifted, allow them to express the, the, the gift of God, the grace of God in their lives. When people come to church, 
they go there, they know that if I come, I will meet with God. Not to go to lecture halls and say they are going to church. Not to go and meet taskmasters and say they go to church. Because they have nothing more, they bind the people with fear. You are afraid to leave your church and visit another church because you will invoke the rot of your pastor. But let me tell you something. You can only catch the chickens. You cannot catch the true eagles. You cannot catch them. You cannot, you cannot catch us. You cannot catch us. Why? Our nature is uncageable. Our nature cannot be caged. Mommy Gio, you cannot catch the seed of God. Daddy Gio, you cannot catch the seed of God. Archbishop, whoever you are, Chief Apostle, you cannot catch the children of God. Anybody that you catch is because he's ordained to be caged by you and it's for the purpose of separation. Praise the Lord. You cannot catch us. One of these days, they will hear the voice of resurrection. They will hear the voice of freedom. They will come back to life. That's why you see me saying it the way I am saying. Hallelujah. I repeat, people who are looking for association don't talk the way I talk. The ministry I have is not to look for association. The ministry I have is come out of her, my people. It's a battle ministry. It's a battle of the spirit of truth against error. I'm a contender of the truth in this age. Hallelujah. We we'll continue to contend for the truth. Contend. The devil will try everything. But you will soon get to know that this is a move of God. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that called it, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. <laughs> Amen. The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there a righteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy, of whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion, of whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. The elder. Who is the elder? Ah, Jesus. Who is the elder? Esau is the elder. He will serve. His thus said the Lord. He will serve the younger. I repeat. Esau, the elder. The elder. That had the message first. That came out the first. That have been going up and down, say we are in the message, we are in the message. Watch. If the revelation I'm giving you is the truth, watch what will happen as the days go by. The older, the, the elder will serve the younger. Very soon, they will all come and submit. Not to me, but to a move that God is starting now. That's a move that people will soon know that they have lost the birthright. God will raise up people from nowhere to hold this end time truth. God is going to raise up people that you never imagined they never heard of before because nothing can stop the move of God. He said of you to shine this light. You denominated again this truth. Uh, God on this day wrote a book concerning William Abraham. He titled William Abraham, a man sent from God. 
There's a statement he made today. He said, one of the reasons that he believed God chose William Abraham in this age is because he, by foreknowledge, he knew that through William Abraham, the message will not be denominated. He is not going to build himself a denomination around himself. And William Abraham made a statement. He said, this last move of God that he's spearheading through his ministry, he said, it will never be denominated again. He said, it will be impossible to denominate it. That is why, in the whole entire message, although we say, Abraham, 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 nobody has Abraham Tabernacle in Jeffersonville in the U.S. as our headquarters. We don't have anybody that is our head, our, 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 our leader. Every church is sovereign. And it will shock you to note that in this entire message, some have headquarters with branches. In Ghana, there's one church in Ghana. It has seven churches. Seven different churches. Like I have, we have sent uh, Uma here, Pastor Thomas, Francis at uh, Were, Ikorodu, Akwanga, and who else? Eh? Oka, all. They are supposed to be my church. They never have pastors. They only stay there, they bring one elder to stay there. Then he's the one, he visits here, he visits here. Every Sunday, all the tithes and offerings, they send it to him. Amen. Hallelujah. They gather. Ha! Who see this entire message? Who do it like this? Like Prophet Timothy will say, who do you? Who do you? Who do you? Apostle Paul said, who has bewitched you? Ha! You read something, the entire message, and you set up something like that, and you're following them, you read it, and you're following such a thing. They're in Nigeria. They're in Ghana. There is another man in Benin. A man that will set families and scatter them scatter them that man is antichrist even his own antichrist is worse than the real antichrist the real antichrist he's building he bring people together bring people he will bring Oboni and Hindu together with Christian we are one but this one I have met some people who left that place. Esau. Within the same message. I'm saying this. Praise the Lord. You are not the target of this message. Oh. The target of this message are those who have been bewitched by these people. That they will hear something and their eyes will receive deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He asked them, Brother Osas, you are listening to me now in London. I know you are watching me now. You just received your deliverance recently from that same man. They gathered over there in London and they are his branch. Anywhere they gather, they are his branch. Anywhere, tight and offering, they send them to him. And what be tight any of you? You write better card than he writes. He will tell you, Koro, Koro, Instead of you to bring that money to me, you are going to buy a car. I will say, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. C collect the car. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you something, church. I told you this message is not for you. It's for them out there. You are bewitched. You have been bewitched. That is not the message. The message came to give us freedom, 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 freedom. Who do 
do us this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have a seal. Romans chapter 10, verse 1, 2, 3, 4. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. You have a seal. You have a seal. Verse 1. Romans. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for all enter message believers is that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a seal of God. But that seal is not according to knowledge. It's not according to knowledge. You left your denomination and you enter another denomination. Worse than the one you were before. That is why in all these inter-message churches, amen, the same denomination, the man that came from, from Adamawa this weekend, he said there's something I noted. He said he's learning something here. That this is the first church is coming, Pentecostal church. He said pastor has his office and his ministers also have offices. He said it's not done like that now. He said he has learned it now. He's going to his church to rearrange these things. Now he has seen that the ministry is not one man. Only the pastor, all enter message churches, go and find out. Only the pastor has office. The next office may be Dickens. Or, I know a church at Bagada, when their pastor was alive, that their Thanksgiving offering, I was reliably confirmed, told by many, all the offering they collect, the Thanksgiving offering goes to the pastor's house. And one of the ministers that was once with us here, who also has his church, I was told that once the collect offering finished, now the pastor, they collect the money. They count the money, they come and give him, you take it home. Amen. So, even in bride assembly, it's a womb. There are two nations here. Same father, same mother. In this same ministry, here, bride assembly. While some are looking at the word. Some are looking at the belly, what to eat. But there shall be separation. We shall see it next week. Stand up. Praise the Lord. Here number 306. Okay.
He sought for it with tears. He didn't get it again. Amen. Do you know why they will not allow ministries to function in the entire message? One man show. Because all the tight of that church belong to the pastor. So that another person will not share with them. Amen. Enter message churches. Only those who have had us, and some of them are changing. Generality of them don't go near that tight. The tight, the whole tight of the church belong to the pastor. There is a special box for it. Only him and his wife had the key. Enter message. All the billionaires in their church, the tight they pay goes to the man and him alone. So you discover that the pastor is the richest in the church. He's the richest. And when we come home here too, I said there are people here, two groups of people in this church. There are some ministers that have left here. Together with some gifted sisters here, the sisters went to open church and employed them to come and be preaching there for them. They were with us here. Amen. They were with us here. Because the prophet knows he cannot do anything. He can't do anything more than to see vision. He left and employed evangelists to come. He is the prophet and overseer. While the pastor is the host pastor. See confusion? 
Watch their, I see them for their handbill. Overseer, prophet. Gehazi. Then, the host pastor. Then the man is there. You preach very well. I increase your allowance. It's happening. Praise God. Why do you think the minister is going there? It's food to eat. At least after that, they will settle them. Hey, church. Go and walk home. Go and look for work or this end time move. Go and do business. Oh. Go and do business. Oh. If not, you will compromise. Because of hunger, you will drop the word of God. Man must work. And all our ministers are encouraged to walk. There's nobody, including myself. Praise the Lord. You will not regret standing for this truth in the name of Jesus. The fishing net that caught you. Amen. It's a move of God in this end time. Yield yourself. Let God perfect what he has started in your life. He is going to raise a glorious church in this age. There's going to be a group of people, when they see you, they will say, this is a Christian. Not because of a label or the t-shirt you wear, but because of a life you live. There's going to be a church that people will enter, they will not look for a man. When they enter, they will see the God of that ministry. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May you not miss that revival in the name of Jesus. Listen, the revival has not started, though. He's gathering us for the revival. It has not started. When that revival will start, praise the Lord, you won't be looking for anybody to pray for you. Amen. Your neighbors will know there's a Christian around. Your office, they will know there's a Christian around. When it was time for the restoration of the gifts, it, history records from William Simon where that revival started. I hope you know it did not start with William Abraham. It started with William Simon. Hallelujah. When they said 50, 50 uh, meters away from the church, you are just passing. When you pass there, you'll be slain in the spirit. The anointing will pack you for you to know that you are passing by Jesus. They attracted so much crowd until the place there was too small. And it happened in another upper room. When this thing will happen, amen. Each time God wants to prepare his people, he is preparing us. Preparing us. Preparing us. When we are prepared, he will expose us. Hallelujah. He will not be exposing the address. He will be exposing the individual. Wherever you go, you are carrying a fire. There is a revival that is coming up. And God is preparing us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. We shall continue next week.